meant to be faithful. I know you said women are looking for that faithful kind of guy. Yeah. But are we are we meant are we made to be faithful? It's a really tricky one. We're made to be faithful in terms of um, reproductive parental parents. Yes. So um, the best thing for a child is that both their inputs, both their parents, stick together for a reasonable period of time to input into that child's development. But then there's a difference between that and what we call sexual fidelity. Mm. So, so you could be actually a, a, a polyamorous relationship, or you could be monogamous in your parenting relationship, so you only choose to reproduce with one person, yeah. but you could actually have many other lovers, for example. So human love is very, very complicated because it doesn't necessarily just exist in the monogamous yeah, way. Yeah, and then why, I wonder, are, are we born to be jealous? You know, if you think, well, we're, we're able to have yeah multiple mm. partners from an evolutionary mm. point of view then why do we have this inbuilt emotion of jealousy because for example if you're a woman and you're jealous of maybe um, an interaction your your partner's having with another woman mm -hmm. it's because you're worried that his investment particularly his resources are going to be spread oh my gosh, yes. they're not just going to be directed at you and your children and therefore Yours. you have this jealous drive to protect your relationship so it's so it's, it's, it's kind of an unhealthy protection mechanism That's and obviously you know in extreme cases it can be very unhealthy but jealousy is a natural kind of um risk warning that oh, hold on one second his attention is going somewhere else yeah. or her attention is going somewhere else okay let's get into some questions <laughs> we've got so many questions here um joanne says does anna believe in love at first sight no oh really? i don't i'm really oh, sorry joanne. <laughs> what is it just is it just lust yeah so the feeling you have with, with so-called love at first sight is in fact lust at first sight. So when you are first attracted to somebody, that is an unconscious driver. That's very much driven by evolution. That's the result of you seeing this person, doing all those little assessments on their physical appearance, and it going ping in your brain, yeah, this is a good one. This is someone I'm attracted to. And you've got releases of dopamine and oxytocin in your brain, making you, lowering your inhibitions going across and forming a relationship with that person. Dopamine, which is motivating you to do that. It's a reward chemical. It's all entirely unconscious. And that is lust. Lust is an unconscious driver. And then when does it become love? That's really tricky to say. And, and you could get, you you can, yeah, you you get <laughs> another you know, specialist in the area here who'd probably completely disagree with me. But I would say love is a much deeper more profound and it's an it's got that unconscious element but it's also got a lot of conscious consideration around it as well so it's about so, maintenance and trust and empathy all of which exist in your neocortex of your brain and love is an attachment relationship so attachments yeah. are are very deep intense relationships you don't have many in your life but one of the ones you do have is with your lover and and therefore i would say that was love and what you tend to see with people mm. is if they've had lust at first sight and then they do go on to have a long-term relationship, it's quite easy to rewrite history and go, actually, I felt this intense love the first time I saw this person. You probably didn't. But there's just, yeah. But it's mm. that sort of looking back in retrospect and, and rewriting it a little bit. 